A brief overview of Genesis chapter 1, verses 11 through 25, the 29th of December, 2022. Reading from the New International Version of 2011. By the end of this lesson, learners will be able to affirm the divine origin of all life. They shall affirm the sanctity of animal life and shall worship the God who only does good. To introduce this section, we ask, if Genesis 1, 1 through 24, is factually true, then what? Could matter have been pre-existing? Could there be multiple universes? Or could there have been other universes before? Could complex order in life arrive by chance? Could there be other creators? Could there have been a previous Juriassic age? Could everything and everyone be a simulation or the dream of a god? Could there be a cosmic conflict between equal forces of good and evil? Beginning at verse 11, Elohim, God, commands vegetation, that is, seed-bearing kinds. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees, on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The Hebrew term kind, does this equate to species, species of plants and of animate creatures? And does this term allow for variation and speciation over time? The term for vegetation normally means grass. Here it is a general term, and the other two terms are subcategories. By creating in kinds, God seems to have been concerned with order as opposed to the earlier chaos. Eventually, the law will say, You shall not let your animals breed with a different kind. God wants all kinds to be able to reproduce. And the Hebrew term for seed takes on thematic importance later in Genesis when used metaphorically for human offspring. In verses 12 and 13, Reproducing plants are declared good. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. In what sense does land produce living plants? Is plant life encoded in minerals plus air plus light and water? From verse 14, the fourth creative day, luminaries and seasons. Elohim commands luminaries, or lights. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Take note of the term sign. In the Greek translation of the ancient Bible, the term used is semeon. The Genesis account stands in contrast to that of the ancient Middle East, where the major Sumerian gods, An, Enlil, and Enki, put the moon and the stars in place to regulate days, months, and omens. In the Babylonian hymn to Shamash, the sun god, reference is also made to his role in regulating the seasons and the calendar in general. 
He is also the patron of divination. The Hebrew word used for sign has a cognate in Akkadian that is used for omens. In Jeremiah 8.2, Yahweh curses those who inquire after the host of heaven. The Hebrew term for great creatures, tanin, has cognate forms in other ancient languages, referring to a sea monster in Canaanite mythology, where it is used as a symbol of chaos and evil. In the Genesis account, chaos was a condition that Yahweh has rectified. There is no reference to sea monsters. So, this is the second occurrence of the verb bara in this account. The term tanin is used elsewhere in the Hebrew Bible of snakes, crocodiles, and other powerful animals, and once of a mythological sea creature that symbolizes God's end-time enemies. In Isaiah 27, On that day, the Lord, with his cruel and great and strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the twisting serpent, and he will kill the dragon that is in the sea. In Genesis, God was the creator of chaos and thus knows how to subdue it. From verse 22, Elohim commands multiplication. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the waters in the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. If you're meeting in a group, discuss together what current human activities are causing wildlife numbers to decrease. From verse 24, Elohim makes life happen. Thus the earth, thus the earth produces living creatures. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And it was so. Discuss together. Did these include the biggest dinosaurs? In verse 25, Elohim makes creatures reproduce. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds, and God saw that it was good. Discuss amongst yourselves what is good about poisonous vipers, stinging scorpions, disease-bearing mosquitoes, fire ants, coyotes, mice, and rats. Begin discussing amongst yourselves how you might critique Malthusian globalist terraforming. That is, attempts to cool the entire earth by blocking sunlight with atmospheric and stratospheric spraying with particulate matter trying to lower sea levels by a hundred meters. Or the sequestering of carbon in underground banks by culling forests and burying trees to reduce the supposed greenhouse effect caused by carbon dioxide. After, the, after our next lesson, we shall further critique attempts to depopulate the planet by 8 billion humans through strategic use of vaccines, weather control, war, and famine. Test yourselves. Who or what is the origin of all life? How can animal life be held as sacred? And how can we believe that God is good when so much in the world is marked by violence and death. What one fact, insight, belief, or action did you learn from this passage? 
So pray aloud, giving thanks to God for his creative mind, power, wisdom, and design. For our next session, read ahead in Genesis chapter 2, each day in different Bible versions.